leprechaun is a magical elf that is said to hoard gold and to live in Ireland. He looks something like this. Do you believe in leprechauns? Do leprechauns exist? Whenever you ask yourself questions such as this one, the problem is not the word leprechaun. The problem is the word exist. The philosophers have been debating the meaning of the formidable word exist at least since the days of Plato and Aristotle. What does it mean to exist? After 2,000 years, this is what the theologians at the Catholic Encyclopedia have to say about the word exist. It is not possible to put forward a strict definition of existence. Yet the theologians tell you unambiguously that Catholic teaching virtually asserts that God's existence can be proved. How can the Christian theologians even begin to prove the existence of God if they don't know what the word exist means? <laughs> what is it that they're going to prove? The scholars at the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, a bastion of logic and rationality, do little better. Existence is at once familiar and rather elusive. There is more than a little difficulty in saying just what existence is. Yet the Stanford scholars use the word exist as if they knew what they were talking about. To say that space-time points exist seems inconsistent with saying that some space-time points are future and so do not exist yet or are past and so exist no longer. Certain events may be existing for you now, sitting at your computer screen, but other events will replace those as existent should you decide to walk one way or another. You what? What sense does it make to say that an event such as a car crash exists? What are these professional philosophers talking about? Actually, this happens only when men of learning fail to define the words that make or break their arguments. When you don't define, you create a loophole in your theory. The mathematicians proudly refer to these loopholes as paradoxes or dualities. The philosophers David Hume and Immanuel Kant zeroed in on the crucial question, what does the word exist add to the word object? The idea of existence makes no addition to the idea of any object. We do not make the least addition to the thing when we further declare that this thing is. Now we can answer the question posed by Hume and by Kant. For the purposes of science, the word exist means physical presence. The physical part of this definition invokes an object. An object is that which has shape. The presence part invokes location. Location is the set of distances from the test object to the remaining objects in the universe. We say that something exists when, in addition to shape, it has location. The physical presence definition of exist and the shape definition of object are not scientific because I say so. They are scientific because we can use them consistently. This is an objective criterion. Compare this against the mathematical establishment's subjective see-touch criterion. An object is anything that is visible or tangible. The see-touch definition is circular because it invokes a second object to do the seeing or touching. Burton Russell used an even more amusing criterion. He proposed that an object is anything that can be used as the subject of a sentence, a notion that is very popular today. Russell can talk about motion, yet motion fits but awkwardly with our notion of object. For the purposes of science, the word motion is a verb. If an object can be anything you can think or talk about, Russell's all-encompassing term loses all meaning. It should not surprise you, therefore, when the mathematicians of the world confuse dots with locations and lines with itineraries. In science and in physics, we must establish a distinction between objects and concepts in order to use these strategic words consistently. The definition of exist is circumscribed to objects and summarily excludes all concepts, specifically all so-called mathematical objects. For the purposes of science, a concept is a relation between two objects. Concept, a word that embodies or invokes more than one object or location. 
The word concept is predicated on the word object. A concept also requires a living entity and lacks shape, whereas an object has shape all on its own. A concept also has an opposite. Up is the opposite of down, on is the opposite of not on, and mass is the opposite of massless. On the other hand, tree is not the opposite of rock, and cat is not the opposite of no cat. A good way to synthesize these notions is that the word object is to the number one what the word concept is to the number two. For the purposes of science, space is not a concept. All concepts were invented by man. Like concepts, space doesn't have shape. But unlike concepts, space was there before any of us came along. We discovered space. We invented concepts. In science, it is irrational to say that space or that a concept such as a number exists. In science, we must limit the use of the word existence to physical objects. We would otherwise be unable to use the word consistently. Pursuant to the physical presence version of exist, it is also irrational to try to prove the existence of a chair. A chair exists by definition if it has location. Unfortunately, the amusing habit of proving the existence of chairs and rocks is hopelessly ingrained in the establishment. A detector created from matter has little or no chance of either proving or disproving the existence of dark matter. A self-declared atheist, Richard Dawkins, incongruously talks about disproving the existence of God. It's said that you can neither prove nor disprove the existence of a supernatural creator. I find that a weak position. Can Dawkins prove the existence of my left foot right now? If he cannot show it to you this very moment, does my left foot not exist? In science, we don't prove the existence of dark matter, space-time, god, or leprechauns. In science, we define the word exist. If the entity in question meets the criteria, it exists pursuant to the definition. The devil's advocate may ask how I know that this chair exists. The answer again is quite simple. In science, we don't. Imagine that God exists, but that suddenly you lose your faith. Does God suddenly disappear? If you recover your faith, does God instantly exist again? There is no provision for faith or wisdom, belief or knowledge in the definition of exist. It is just as ludicrous for a theist to claim that he believes in the existence of God as it is for an atheist to claim that he doesn't believe in the existence of God. As a last resort, the mathematical physicist and the theologian of traditional religion band together and oppose this definition of exist on grounds that it is a bit too rigorous or narrow for their tastes. Here we are talking about a scientific definition, one that can be used consistently. A definition had better be rigorous if it makes or breaks your theory. Definition. A restriction placed on the extent or usage of a word. In science, we don't rely on after-the-fact operational or functional definitions. In science, we define words before we use them in a sentence. Physics is first and foremost the study of objects. Without objects, we cannot even begin to do physics. Physics is not the science of energy and measurement. Physics is the science of existence. Therefore, unless a theorist can define the words object and exist unambiguously, it is dubious whether he is talking about physics. The next time someone tells you that he believes, or doesn't, in the existence of God, space, time, a number, or a leprechaun, just ask him to define the word exist. Then just sit back, grab a beer, and watch him make a fool of himself. <laughs>